Hi there, we're going to look at some optimization problems or some max min problems where we're going to use derivatives to determine the maximum or minimum quantity. And we're going to, I'm going to talk your way through the process a little bit and show you how to do a couple of these examples. We've done a number of them so far. I'll just pick a couple of others to do. So in a question here, as you see, they want to know, find, want you to find the point on the line the line y equals 5x plus 4, what point is closest to the origin? So I've drawn on this graph, you can draw the equation, y equals 5x plus 4, and you can see somewhere in here, it's close to the origin, and we want to know where is that distance the least, right? It seems to go from, if I drew, let's say in blue from the origin here, it's far away, it gets closer and closer, and then it starts getting further away. Where along here is the point where it gets that distance gets as small as possible? Somewhere on that track. That's what we're trying to find out. So how are we going to determine that? Well, we've learned from our derivatives that if you had a function for distance and you wanted to know when is it at a minimum, what you would do is figure out what that function is. Step one will be take the derivative once you know the function. Then set that derivative equal to zero and solve. Whoops, let's spell solve properly. There we go. So then solve it. So we need to have an equation for distance and the equation for distance you covered quite a while ago. We'll set that, we'll take its derivative, set it equal to zero and solve. So coordinate geometry to find the distance between any two points. Uh, the formula is square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That's just Pythagoras theorem between two points. Well, what are the two points? We know one of them is the origin. The origin means it's point zero zero. So we'll call that the x2 and y2 in my formula. That way, the other point that we're going to solve for is x1, y1, or just xy. That's what we're going to try and solve for. So my distance formula, I'll just fill in some of the values I know. If x2 is 0, then you're going to get 0 minus x1 squared, which is negative x1 squared and y2 is 0, so you get minus y1 squared. So you would have negative x1 squared plus negative y1 squared. Well, we know when you square the negative, it's going to become positive. So I'm going to rewrite this as just x1 squared. And the other point is going to be y1 squared. All right, so our formula looks like that. If we rewrote it uh, in terms of a power, that's x1 squared plus y1 squared all to the one half power, because that's what a square root is. So there's my function that I want to deal with. I'd love to take the derivative of that function, because we said that was really step one. Find a function, uh, take the derivative of the function. Well, I don't want to take the derivative of that yet because it has two variables. It has an x and a y. We need to get rid of one of those. Well, if I know that y equals 5x plus 4, I'm going to take 5x plus 4 and replace it everywhere I see y. So, move that down a little bit. My distance formula can be rewritten as x1 squared plus uh, 5x plus 4 squared all to the 1 half power. So now I have a formula that just has x's in it, so I can go ahead and take the derivative. I could simplify that out, but I'm just going to take the derivative of this using chain rule a couple of times. If you're going to get trouble, have trouble with this chain rule, go look at some of my chain rule videos on what I'm going to do. So to take the derivative d prime, the 1 half comes down. You keep this bracket the same. 
So 5x plus 4. Those are x1s. They're all the same x. So we've kept the bracket the same to the negative 1 half. Then you take the derivative of what's inside that bracket. The derivative of x1 squared is 2x. The derivative of 5x plus 4 squared is another chain rule to keep the bracket the same to the 1 power. Then the derivative of what's inside that bracket is 5. So I now have, move it down a little bit, my derivative d prime. Uh, I see a fraction here, so I'm going to write this all as a fraction with a 2 in the denominator, that 2 right there. This negative exponent means that that whole thing is in the denominator because it's negative, and it's a square root because it's a fraction. So I'm going to put the fraction down here, x1 squared plus 5x1 plus 4 squared, and all of this nonsense is going to stay up top. I'm going to simplify it before I write it down. Here I've got 2x, and 5 times 2 is 10. So you'd get 10x plus 8, because the 2 goes in the 4. And then that is times 5. So you get 50x plus 40. And again, these are x1s. They're all the same x. And so you have 2x plus... 50x plus 40. So I think in the numerator, I get 52x1 plus 40. Okay, so here's your derivative. To find the max or min point, you set that derivative equal to 0. But when we set that equal to 0, we don't need to concern ourselves with the denominator because it's not going to make the function 0. You could just focus on the numerator. So you set 52x plus 40 equal to 0. And you solve that for x. We're at step 2. So bring the 40 over becomes negative 40. And divide by 52. Negative 40 over 52. Negative 20 over 26 negative 10 over 13. So it's at the point negative 10 over 13 is where the x is. How would you figure out the y value? Well, y is 5x plus 4. So we'll plug in, plug in uh, negative 10 over 13 in for x. Negative 10 thirteenths plus 4, so you get negative 50 over 13 plus 4 becomes 52 over 13, and your answer is 2 thirteenths. So the point that's closest is negative 10 thirteenths and 2 thirteenths, and you've got it. That is the one point way back on this graph where it is at its closest, at the point negative 10 thirteenths and 2 thirteenths is the point that's closest to there. We work out exactly where that is. All right, let's take a look at the second question that I can try, where the function changes a little bit. Now we want to know where is the point on a parabola where that uh, distance is closest to the point negative 4, 1. So I've drawn the parabola, y equals a half x squared, which is the same as 2y equals x squared. And I've got the point on here, negative 4, 1. And if we realize, if you look, there's a number of points. This, if this was the point, that distance is bigger. The distance seems to get smaller. That seems like it's pretty small. And then it seems to get bigger again and larger and larger and larger. So there's a point in here somewhere where this distance gets to be the smallest possible. So we'll write our formula again. Our formula for the distance equation, I'll just move all this blue out of the way. Our formula for the distance equation, and I'm going to plug in this where I see x2 and that where I see y2. 
So the exact same formula. And this time, instead of that x1, y1, let's just call the other point x, y on the function. Okay, so my same distance formula, square root of x2 minus x1, or just x squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared. So we've plugged in the point negative 4 for an x and 1 for a y. So my function looks like that. I am now going to plug in and get rid of a y. Wherever you see y, I'm going to put in 1 half x squared right in here. So distance is square root of negative 4 minus x squared plus 1 minus 1 half x squared squared. That's because y I've replaced with 1 half x squared. I'm ready to take my derivative. I'm just going to rewrite that again as a power. So we'll have negative 4 minus x squared and 1 minus 1 half x squared all squared. And the whole thing is to the 1 half power. So taking my derivative, 1 half, the whole bracket to the minus 1 half. There's a square here to the minus 1 half then times the derivative of what's inside. So I'm going to move all that down just a bit to get out of the way of the axis here. So taking that derivative, we had to take the derivative of what is inside this bracket, which is going to be a bit of a mess. So chain rule on the first part, take the 2 down, keep the bracket the same to the 1 times the derivative of what's inside the bracket, which is a negative 1. Then plus, and we take this 2 down to the bracket, 1 minus 1 half x squared to the 1 times the derivative of what's inside the bracket, which is negative x. Because the derivative of negative 1 half x squared is negative 2 over 2 x. When we set that equal to zero, as we recall, this whole first step here, the one half, the two went in the denominator, uh, this whole x bracket here became to the negative one half and it went to the denominator. We really don't care too much about it. It's, I'm going to write it down, but we don't care about it. I am going to take a couple of steps out here on the side and I'm going to try and simplify this bracket because it's the one we really care about. So negative 1 and 2 is going to make negative 2 times inside here. You get 8, and negative 2 times negative x is plus 2x. Right? Now, you've got negative 2x times 1, so negative 2x, and negative 2x times a half x squared is a positive x cubed. So here is a function I have. I've got x cubed plus 2x and minus 2x goes away and plus 8. So in the numerator, I have x cubed plus 8. And in the denominator, I have that 2 from the 1 half. And I've got the square root of all of this garbage that I don't even want to write down. Okay, that whole function plus that function squared. The reason I don't want to write it down is because, as you recall, we set this thing equal to 0. And when we do, you're only worried about what makes the numerator 0. So we set derivative equal to 0. You could factor that as a sum of cubes, right? Or take the 8 to the other side. x cubed equals negative 8. Cube root of both sides. And you get x equals negative 2. So there is your point at x equals negative 2 is where it is at its closest. Right here at negative 2, that is the smallest distance. Of course, that doesn't look great because this point is supposed to be up here, negative 4, comma 1, so it should be a little bit higher. 
Uh, so at that point, the distance is at a minimum and every other distance gets a little bit worse off than that. Alrighty, so we now know the X coordinate is at negative two. How do we know what the Y coordinate is? I come back down. If X is negative two, you know that Y equals one half X squared. So put in the negative two, one half negative two squared. You get one half of four, which is two. So the point is at negative two comma two. There's the point where the distance is at its closest. All right, one last example I gave you, or question I asked you. So for number 12, if you had a cylindrical can, it's made to hold one liter of oil. Find the radius of the can that will make the cost of the metal a minimum. You're going to minimize the cost of metal. If you minimize the cost of the metal, you are minimizing the surface area. So you need a formula for surface area of the cylinder, and you know that it holds one liter. You know the volume equals 1,000 cubic centimeters. So you have two formulas, a volume of a cylinder and the surface area of a cylinder that you need to consider. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, and the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. One of these, you know what the number is. The volume is 1,000 is pi r squared h. We want to take the derivative of the surface area because it's what you want to be a minimum. We can't take the derivative of this because there are two variables, r and h. We need to eliminate one. I propose that we would eliminate h. It just makes sense. It's easier to eliminate for. So we'll rearrange the first equation to get h by itself. h will be equal to 1,000 over pi r squared. And we will substitute that into the other equation. So surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r, and instead of h, we put 1,000 over pi r squared. So we have some things that will cancel. One of the r's goes away. The pi goes away. My surface area formula is now 2 pi r squared plus 2,000 over r. If I rewrote it again, it's 2 pi r squared plus 2,000 r to the minus 1 power. Now I can take the derivative. So the derivative of surface area is 4 pi r uh, plus 2,000 onto minus 1, then r to the minus 2. So 4 pi r minus 2,000 over r squared. Set that equal to 0. Take a term to the other side. 2,000 over r squared equals 4 pi r. Get into the fun part now. Common factor on both sides. Divide by 4 and you get 500. So you'd have 500 over r squared equals pi r. Gather the r's together and take the pi over. I think you get r cubed equals 500 over pi. And you take the cube root of that to solve for r. So cube root of 500 over pi. Well, everybody knows that equals about 5.4, but you don't need to round that off and get an inaccurate answer. You could just you check the question to make sure you're answering what it asked for. It said find the radius, and we have what the radius is. The radius should be the cube root of 500 over pi, or about 5.4 centimeters. All right, so there's the three I asked you, and you can keep working on more optimization problems. Hope you've learned something.